congratulations to all of you who are friends and board members of renu and to the staff of renu it's it's been a joy to see the growth of renu over the years you you have to go back to the beginning to realize how how we began it and i'll try to share that with you a little bit today we're talking about the 50th anniversary of the second vatican council now during these first three sessions the first three said there were four sessions but during the first three i was a seminarian uh privileged i guess at first year was tough but eventually i got used to it but overall i'm very grateful that that's where i was studying and as i say some of our professors were commuting back and forth between belgium and rome to serve as experts at the council so as seminarians we were very energized by what was going on in the church as i say after the initial shock which some of you may well have experienced as well and uh, you know in your younger days after the initial shock of some of the changes that were being uh, suggested uh we said you know this is pretty good you know we like kind of like this and so it, we really were uh, enthused about living out the vision that the second vatican council gave us and what was emphasized greatly at the council was the sacrament of baptism i was saying how all these different courses all by experience five years and three months worth in a parish what connects them all and suddenly you know you saw the remember some of you remember the ad about the light bulb coming mm -hmm. on but suddenly it clicked i said that's it this development from the second vatican council restoring the right of christian initiation of adults the catechumenate that puts it all together because it had different periods and stages <laughs> it combined teaching with with pastoral activity it combined uh, liturgical celebrations with social action it was it was a very holistic approach to formation i came <coughs> back to new jersey uh, to return to the archdiocese very enthused about this as not just a way of bringing new people into our church through the conversion process and respecting their their growth as they move through the different stages and periods of of the catechumen and i saw this is a great model for the church for our parish we could put all the different ministries all the different activities i was involved in and other people were involved at that time mostly priests were running all these things uh, we could put them under that big umbrella of the catechumen so that's what I came home excited about and wanting to promote. Now, we talk about divine providence. And simultaneously, while I'm all charged up about the catechumenate and the possibilities that that would have for our parish life, there's this other extraordinary priest, Tom Kleister whom Archbishop Garrity, one of the great prophetic bishops we've had in our church in the country, much less the world, picked to run the Office of Pastoral Renewal. And his charge was to have pastoral councils in every parish where the people would be consulted about their parish life. It was a new concept. Uh, the fact that you would a pastor would actually ask advice or counsel from lay people. <laughs> this was something else. Anyway, Tom was the right guy to do it. And typical Tom Kleister, he didn't want to turn it into a political thing. You know, it's so easy, you know, to make, you know, mm -hmm. different factions in the parish lobbying for this or lobbying for that. He wanted right from the beginning for people to see this as a spiritual ministry if you're going to serve on the parish council you're doing that for the glory of god and for the service of all the people in the parish not just your favorite group and so he began it with a series of retreats and he had started that 
already, you know, and, and people still remember those retreats. I think they were held at our former s seminary location at Darlington up in Mawa in New Jersey. Well, he was doing that. I was thinking, how do we get this catechumenate started in the diocese? I was, at the time, I was uh, in another office down the hall from Tom, his office of pastor renewal. I was in the office of, of catechetical ministry in the diocese. And I wrote a letter to the archbishop. This is Garrity. And I suggested, I said, could we somehow prepare the way for this adult catechumenate by helping our people in the parishes begin to share their faith together. Because the catechumenate calls for us to share it with people outside the church. Most of us were not even comfortable sharing it among ourselves. You know, it, it, it was kind of, we were good Catholics, but we, it wasn't something we, we talked a lot about with each other. So I had that concept and I outlined in a letter to him, a, uh, a report, basically, end of year report for my first year as director of the catechetical office, uh, an outline of a program that might do it. The Archbishop accepted my suggestion that this be under Tom's office, because I said, if we do it in our office, religious education, they're going to say, oh, that's just for kids. But we wanted something for adults. And Tom was obviously very much involved with adults. And in his own way, what he brought to the, uh, to the table was his, his pastoral experience. See, I was kind of the academic guy with all that jazz from Louvain. But Tom was nitty gritty in his parish life in Park Ridge, New Jersey. And he had developed small Christian community. And he was very anxious to see parish councils develop in that line of sharing faith with one another, not just policies and programs and so forth, but actually growing as, as we did at, at Liturgy today, you know, kind of talking about what what affects us in our in our lives, the connection between our lives and the Word of God. And then Tom and Tom and I got a group of folks together, uh, which included some bishops. We were not prejudiced against bishops. <laughs> <laughs> we had some good sisters and some good priests and some good lay people. I guess the group probably was around 60 people. And then we began to brainstorm. And I had that original idea, but that became uh, tweaked as we went along. It, it, it developed into the different periods and stages that we know as renewal when it got off the ground. And then we went out to the parishes, and we promised parish when we went to visit with the staffs, we would not have any other competition with this. If, we, if the parish did this renew process for six weeks in the fall and six weeks during Lent, all the other agencies would back off. We wouldn't be asking them to do anything else but this for those six-week periods. That was a big selling point. The other thing we did, and this was suggested by somebody who's kind of been forgotten, we don't, but he's up there in years now himself, a Father Cash and You House had been mm -hmm. brought in by Archbishop Garrity to help us tighten the bolts a little bit, you know, make, make this a little more effective. And he suggested we pilot it. Well, we did. We picked out about five or six parishes, inner city, suburban, ethnic, changing parish, was a parish where I lived at that time in East Orange, uh, moving the population, was, there was a shift in population and so forth, and racial uh, mixtures. So we did that, we piloted it. When I approached Frank Malquin I, about this, I said, I wondered if, you would be open to having Holy Name as a pilot parish for this spiritual renewal program. He never asked what it would cost, either financially or in person power. He simply asked the question, well, Tom, do you think 
it will be spiritually good for our people. That was his criteria. And he was asking me. And I said, yes, I do. That was all he needed to hear. <laughs> we piloted it there, and as I say, in about five other parishes. Uh, and finally, as I say, we, we went door to door to parishes. Out of our 250 parishes at the time, 200 parishes accepted our offer to present Renew for those two six-week periods each year. We did all that, and it seemed to go over very, very well in our own archdiocese. And sure enough, people started to write about it, and the rest, I guess, is history. Uh, other dioceses wanted to do it. Uh, Tom and his staff moved around the country and eventually around the world mm -hmm. to present this spiritual renewal program to people. Incorporated in that was the development of small Christian communities and also the idea of conversion. And, and that is really due to the credit of this renewed staff and obviously your support uh, and your prayers and financial support to keep it going.